Talks. Hello all and welcome to this AWS Online Tech Talk on Amazon Aurora. My name is Adit Tesamant. I'm a Senior Database Specialist Solutions Architect here at AWS. I'm primarily focused on Amazon RDS and Amazon Aurora platforms and work with several databases during my day-to-day -day work with our customers. Today, we'll look at all the new features and enhancements that can help your workloads when you start taking advantage of Amazon Aurora MySQL 3. We will also talk about breaking changes, what options exist to migrate to this new version, and best practices. So let's get started. Here's our agenda today. We will do a quick introduction to Amazon Aurora and look at version options. We will do an overview of Community MySQL 8.0 and its enhancements. Then we'll look at Aurora-specific feature enhancements for Aurora MySQL 3. We will look at breaking and behavioral changes in Aurora MySQL 3. Then we'll look at migration paths to Aurora MySQL 3, and then we'll summarize our findings. Let's do a quick overview of Amazon Aurora. Amazon Aurora is a relational database. It does not compromise on any relational database contracts and provides all the asset properties that you expect from a relational database. Aurora combines the speed and availability of commercial database, while it also keeps the simplicity and cost effectiveness of open source databases, which means there is no license cost to manage and no licensing. There are no additions to worry about because Amazon Aurora offers all advanced features right out of the box. There is no additional cost to simply use a feature, unlike some commercial databases that will charge a la carte for simply enabling a feature. Amazon Aurora is compatible with two open source database engines. You can choose either MySQL or PostgreSQL. This means that the code you wrote for either of these databases will continue to work with Amazon Aurora without making any changes or changing your drivers. All of this comes with AWS promise of simple and pay-as-you-go pricing. Our focus for today is Amazon Aurora's MySQL compatibility. So what does this compatibility with MySQL mean? Let's take a look. Aurora MySQL 3 version introduces a plethora of new features, both inherited from the community MySQL 8.0 and features that are native to Amazon Aurora. These features include common table expressions, role-based authentication, instant DDL, and a lot more. We will dive deep into these individual features in upcoming slides. Today, when you launch an Amazon Aurora MySQL 3 cluster, you can launch it with MySQL Community Edition version 8.0.23 compatibility. This version is available in all regions where Amazon Aurora is supported. Now you may ask, why do we have two version numbers? The version number Aurora MySQL 3.02.1, underlined in red, shows Aurora MySQL major and minor version numbers. The latter part, underlined in purple, shows MySQL Community Edition compatibility. So in this example, Aurora MySQL version 3.0.2.1 0.2.1 is compatible with MySQL Community Edition 8.0.23. We will discuss the new version policy in a little more detail on the next slide. It is also worth noting that along with the latest and greatest features and functionality, Aurora MySQL 3 also contains all Aurora-specific bug fixes through Aurora MySQL 2.10.0. Now let's take a look at our Aurora MySQL version compatibility with community and what changes have been made starting with Aurora MySQL 3. What you see on the top here is also called out in our documentation section called Aurora version policy. This section talks in detail about everything relating to Aurora MySQL versions, including minor and major versions, patches, long-term support, and how we view versioning. We currently support three major versions, MySQL 5.6 compatible, which is Aurora 1.x series, MySQL 5.7 compatible, which is Aurora 2.x series, and the latest, latest version, MySQL 8.0 compatible, which is the Aurora 3.x series. MySQL 5.6 is already end of life in community for a while now, 
and we are looking to do the same on Aurora side. We have what we call a no earlier than date. And really what we're doing here is trying to give customers more transparency, a signal. If they're on this older version, they should begin to plan how to get to a new version. So what we mean by no earlier than date is nothing will happen before this date, but this date may get pushed so that you may get more time, but not less. For example, Aurora MySQL 2 end of life, no earlier than date was March, 2024. Now it's pushed to October, 2024. It may get pushed out a little more. So it will give customers more time to plan upgrades, but it will never go back. As you can see, Aurora MySQL 3 does not have a no later than date, which means that we don't have any plans to retire it yet. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how Aurora minor versions work traditionally until 2.x series. The way we approach compatibility before 1.x and 2.x or with our older Aurora versions was that we picked a particular minor and forked our code off of that minor version. So in case of MySQL 5.6, we picked 5.6.10a. In case of 5.7, we forked off of 5.7.12. And then we added Aurora features to those specific versions. We would port selective fixes as it related to Aurora and obviously CVEs. We did our best to keep current there and then selectively ported features from these versions. This caused some confusion in the past since customers couldn't be sure exactly which community features were part of Aurora 2.x and 1.x releases because of our selective nature. Customers gave us this feedback and we heard it loud and clear and they wanted better version currency with the community edition. So we listened to this feedback and starting with Aurora MySQL 3, we are going to maintain closer currency with community miners. So what does that mean? For our first version, 3.0.1, we say that we are compatible with MySQL 8.0.23. So it is a map to 8.0.23. It includes everything 8.0.23 has with very, very few exceptions, really just architectural differences that may not be needed in Aurora. But for the most part, anything in 8.0.23 is in our first release. And then moving forward, we'll do, uh, sometimes it will come out with 3.0.3 .3 and 4 and so on and so forth. And it might be compatible with um, Community Edition 8.0.26 or 8.0.27, whatever could be the most recent at that time. So to summarize, not every community miner will have an Aurora counterpart, but every Aurora miner will have a community counterpart. And that's just, really has to do with the release schedules of community versus ours. So we're excited to do that and maintain that close compatibility with each miner so that customers can be clear about what's the version from a community standpoint from both fixes and features and allows us from a CVE, st also from the CVE standpoint to stay current. So from a security posture, it is also very much more robust. I hope that makes sense. Now let's start diving into some specific MySQL 8.0 enhancements that we have adopted for Amazon Aurora. We won't be able to cover the entire surface area of all the enhancements, but we'll cover the major items that are really making our customers excited and enhancements that our customers have been asking for a while. The very first thing I wanna talk about is the addition of instant DDL. Customers and people who have been working with Amazon Aurora for a while would remember that we had a fast DDL feature, which was in a lab, lab mode for a long time. And actually it stayed in lab mode for all of its existence. Essentially what this instant DDL feature allowed us to do is that if you made any schema changes, these would happen quickly without taking too many locks and would avoid doing too much logging. What we have done with Aurora MySQL 3 is that we have adopted the MySQL 8.0 Community Edition's Instant DDL algorithm instead. So traditionally in MySQL, especially if you were using a copy algorithm, 
When you wanted to make any sort of changes to the schema, if you wanted to add a column or delete a column or change, let's say, a data type of a column type, essentially what used to happen in the back end is that you will create a full copy of the table, then you would create a temp temporary table to process the concurrent data manipulation operations. You would probably have to rebuild all the indexes, and of course, you are doing, um, you know, taking extensive locks to do all of this work. With MySQL 5.7, the Community Edition introduced an in-place algorithm which tried to avoid some of these issues and tried making changes in place to reduce logging compared to copy algorithm, but it was still quite not there. Now with MySQL 8.0, what we have is an instant algorithm, which essentially is more responsive because all it does is makes metadata level changes. So all DML changes are not supported, of course, but for the supported changes, the change is going to be on metadata level only, which means that it's going to be a lot more responsive but because it significantly reduces the amount of locking and waiting that the server has to do. So this will also reduce the resources that are used to make these changes. And the changes are happening, like I said, only in the metadata and dictionary level. This reduces additional disk IO and CPU cycles that are required, especially when compared to the table copy method. The online operation also reads less data into the buffer pool because it's only making metadata changes. So essentially, all of this, these changes actually help your database make more scalable without actually adding any additional hardware. So your queries have better throughput and your database becomes more scalable whenever the supported instant operations are used. There are limitations, of course. For example, you cannot use compressed row format or temp tables when you add a new column, and it's only going to be added at the end of the table. So there are certain limitations that you have to be aware of uh, instant details, but this definitely is one of the most desirable features by our customers. So if you need to use instant DDL and have been waiting for it, now it's available with Aurora MySQL so that you can use it with your new code. Another highly sought out feature um, or SQL enhancement was support for common table expressions or CTE. Aurora MySQL 3 now supports common table expressions. CTE is something that's been around for a while in relational databases. For example, several commercial databases have had this SQL language enhancement of CTEs. Even in open source databases like PostgreSQL, uh, we have had CTEs, but it was missing from MySQL. MySQL Community Edition added support with version 8.0, and Aurora MySQL 3 has adopted it as well. Now, just to give you some, a primer into what a CTE is, it's basically a temporary named result set, and it's derived from a simple query. One thing to note about CTEs is that they can only be used in the scope of the statement. So in other words, you can't define a CTE, then go do some other work, and then refer back to the CTE. We'll see that in a second when we look at the code example. This example is seen on the screen on the fourth bullet point. Here, we put a select inside the CTE definition, and then you select from a CTE. There are certain specific advantages that make CTE very, very appealing to developers. One of those advantages is that it gives your SQL code better readability, and by the same virtue, improves maintainability of the code. When compared to, say, subqueries, if you're using a lot of subqueries, you have to use multiple those subqueries multiple times, sometimes within other subqueries, which makes for a pretty messy looking code. You don't have to do that anymore when using CTEs. The other important benefit is the ability of the CTEs to be used in a recursive fashion. So the CTE can call itself, and this ability to recursively call itself actually helps significantly when you're trying to do things like traversing a JSON list. When you model hierarchical data in SQL, you can do it using a few ways, for example, using adjacency list or nested sets. CTEs make traversal of hierarchical data models very, very convenient. Let's take a look at an example. At the bottom, we have defined a recursive CTE. You can see that it's calling itself. So you're defining it when you're calling uh, itself within that CTE. Uh, let's assume 
in this example that you have an application that's used at an electronic store. We have a category table that has a parent column. This column contains, let's say, televisions. The top level television value has no parent. Then you have flat screen TVs, which has a parent as regular TVs. Then you have LCDs and OLEDs that have a parent as flat screen TVs and so on and so forth. So the ability to use CTEs in a recursive way makes writing this type of SQL code much, much easier and it keeps it much more readable. Now, of course, you can still do this with regular SQL without using CTEs, but it's simply not as nice or convenient. Another advantage of having CTEs now is that a lot of commercial database developers like to use CTEs and depend on using the CTE in their code. So now if you are a commercial database developer and if you are waiting to migrate your commercial database to MySQL, now you can because uh, the CTEs are also supported. Another SQL feature that MySQL 8.0 introduced was support for window functions. This was another highly sought after feature by our customers, and now it's also available in Aurora MySQL 3. So what are these window functions? Well, they're aggregate-like operations that work on setup rows that are related to the row that you're currently working with. They're aggregate light, but provide additional ability that a regular ag aggregate function like sum or average won't provide. For example, you have here a typical employee salary table. You have a department, employee ID, and their individual salaries. Now let's say that if you wanted to figure out that within a department, what is average salary? That's easy. You can do that with aggregate function like average and then group by department. But what if you wanted to find out within department, which employee has the salary and what is their salary rank? Now without window functions, you can cobble together a SQL query and do it, but it's not gonna be clean or easy. With window functions, this is going to be so simple. You just use a rank function and then you partition or department, then you order by salary. This gives you the result as shown above, clean and simple. Aurora MySQL 3 now supports rank, dense rank, end tile, row number, and a lot more window functions. This also helps migrating code from commercial database engines that used these window functions. It wasn't impossible to migrate it before, but it required extra legwork to rewrite these queries. Now it's going to be much easier because these window functions are supported with Aurora MySQL 3. Another feature that's introduced in MySQL 8 is role-based access control. It's also sometimes known as RBAC for short. Role-based access control was introduced in MySQL 8 and it's also supported in My Aurora MySQL 3. Roles and role-based access is a convenient way of securing groups of users that need to be managed in the same way. A role is a named container of database privileges. For example, ability to read or write data to certain database objects, ability to execute stored pro programs, etc. In the absence of role-based access control, you had to grant privileges to each and every users individually depending on their requirements. These privileges will then allow certain action or disallow others. Now this approach may seem simple, but it's not something that scales to hundreds or thousands of users. It becomes very tedious and error prone. With role-based role access control, you can use a role, which is a named container of privileges we previously discussed. Then once a role is container uh, created, for example, uh, let's say a role for read-only users or a role for ETL users uh, and an admin role and so on and so forth, you can simply add multiple users to this role and all users under the same role will inherit some of these same privileges or all of these same privileges. Now MySQL 8.0 also introduced several new index types. As many of you know, indexes are a way to efficiently sort and store data in a way that is readily available for queries and these additions make it even easier to squeeze out that extra performance from the database. Let's take a look at what these new additions are and how they help. First, there is a new type of index called invisible index. You can use the alter table command 
to make an index invisible. Now, this is not going to drop an index, but the result of this command is that the optimizer will no longer consider this index for query plans. So using this command, you can test the performance impact of removing an index without dropping it and decide whether it's safe to drop an index. Super useful for finding out redundant or unused indexes in a practical way. You can now also create descending indexes. You do this by using the descending keyword using while defining an index. Now, as you may already know, the performance advantage of using an index is derived from the data being sorted in the order of the indexing key. In previous versions, there was no way to physically store the index data in a descending sorted way. Even if you use the descending keyword, it would just be ignored and the data would still be stored in an ascending sort order. As you can imagine, this had adverse performance effect on queries that needed the descending sort order, and the indexes would be scanned in reverse order. With the new descending index and the descending sort support, these queries can also benefit from the new index type. Descending indexes also make it possible for the optimizer to use multiple column indexes when the most efficient scan order for mixed ascending order and some columns in descending order. Finally, you can also create functional indexes now. Essentially, instead of indexing a simple, a single column or a simple column, you can create the index on the result of any function applied to that column or multiple columns. For example, you may be interested in simply extracting a day from a date column and adding an index um, on this derived column. Or you may want to use an absolute value of, value of a column and index that value. All of these index types are supported in Aurora MySQL 3, so now you can enjoy the benefits of the added performance they bring. Now, anyone who has worked with MySQL knows about binary logs and their versatility when it comes to replication. While Aurora MySQL does not need bin logs for its own replication needs, we make bin logs available for customers to take advantage of various replication configurations that bin logs make possible. Let's look at what Aurora MySQL 3 brings to the table for these binary logs. First, there are enhancement with multi-threaded replication. With multi-threaded binary log replication, a SQL thread on MySQL replica reads events from relay log and queues them up for SQL workers thread to apply. These events can now be applied in parallel when possible. This can reduce replication lag and improve performance of binary log replication in some scenarios, such as workloads that generate high rate of writes on the primary database instance. Aurora MySQL 3 now also supports binary log based replication filtering. This is a very convenient way to selectively replicate database by either including or excluding specific databases and tables. This can be achieved by configuring the replicate do and replicate ignore filtering parameters in the parameter groups. Finally, now you can also enable binary log transaction compression with Aurora MySQL 3. When this setting is enabled, MySQL uses ZTSD algorithm to compress the transaction payload, and the compressed transactions are then written to the binary log. They stay compressed in transit and on the replica as well, which helps you save this space on both primary and replica clusters. It also makes binary lock consume less network bandwidth and improves transit performance. If you're using bin log based replicas, the compression can greatly improve replication performance, especially if the network bandwidth between the primary and replica is limited. Performance for binary logs replication is influenced by your database workload characteristics and the database instance class or where the replica is running on. So if you're planning to use any of these new capabilities, you should test these configuration parameters before applying to see how they behave uh, in production, for example. Of course, there are a lot more features that we added. For example, new JSON features like the inline path operator, utility functions like JSON pretty, JSON aggregation functions like JSON uh, array aggregation and JSON object aggregation. We also added no wait and skip locked options with select for share and select for update locking read statements. L skipped locked removes locked rows from the result set. There are new optimizer hints like force index, group index, etc. 
We won't be able to cover the entire surface area of everything that was added to MySQL 8, but good news is that all of these features are also inherited and available in Aurora MySQL 3. Now let's see what Aurora specific enhancements were added to Aurora MySQL 3. And what better way to start discussing about Aurora MySQL 3 features and enhancements than to talk about Aurora Serverless V2. Aurora Serverless V2 was launched earlier this year, and we have seen great reception from our customers. It's supported on Aurora MySQL 3 with version 3.02 or higher. Aurora Serverless V2 is an on-demand auto-scaling configuration for Amazon Aurora that automatically adjusts database compute capacity based on your application requirements. So your database automatically scales capacity to match your workload needs and scales back down when the capacity is no longer needed. The scaling happens in real time, meaning in a fraction of a second. If you have applications that have spiky, unpredictable workload, serverless v2 is a perfect fit for to optimize resource costs without sacrificing performance. Serverless v2 scales compute and memory capacity as needed with no disruption to client transactions or your overall workload. The scaling happens in ACUs or Aurora capacity units. An ACU is a unit of scale, and one ACU is a combination of approximately two gigabytes of memory, corresponding CPU and networking. ACUs can scale granularly in half ACU increments. Aurora storage has always had the capacity to automatically grow and shrink for a while now. So as a result, the entire Aurora serverless architecture is auto scaling and elastic. To support Aurora Serverless V2, we maintain all the infrastructure and we also perform heat management across the physical machines. We also preserve the buffer pool and connections while doing so. Finally, Serverless V2 also scales down faster than its previous versions of Serverless V1. Having said that, it's important to note that we still take a cautious approach to step down um, while scaling down. So we do not prematurely take away memory and buffer pool from any ongoing transactions. Let's take a look at a quick demo of serverless v2 in action. Okay, so in this demo here, what we're showing you is um, this is a CloudWatch dashboard that's going to track our ACU utilization. So we are going to do a flash sale type of application. Um, so on this dashboard, what you see is at the bottom of the screen, you see an orange line. This orange line is the current workload. So the current workload is very stable. Um, and then the blue line is the number of ACUs or Aurora capacity units. Because the workload is stable and it's not needing any additional um, CPU or memory, we see that the ACUs stay pretty stable and they're not um, going up or down. Now, the limit that we have set on ACU is that the lower bound here is 1.5 ACUs, and then the higher bound is nine ACUs. And as you can see that the workload starts to spike, the orange line is spiking, and as soon as the workload is, starts to spike, the blue line, which is our ACUs, immediately starts and catches up to that workload. So the ACUs are responding immediately so as to give enough um, CPU and memory capacity for that workload to satisfy. And now what I'm going to do is because we don't have a ton of time to actually wait several minutes for this demo to finish, um, I am going to fast forward this clip. And then in this fast forwarded clip, you can still see that as the workload starts to keeps continues to go up, our ACUs continue to go up along with it. And um, eventually it hits the peak of nine ACUs. By the way, this is a choice that we have made. You can go much higher than nine ACUs. Um, but here, since we have kept nine ACUs as our peak, that's the maximum uh, serverless v2 allowed the server to scale up to. But you can see that even after the workload basically finishes and goes back to its baseline, the ACUs are not immediately coming down. 
and which is what we want, right? Which is what we discussed because we don't want the ACUs to immediately start to go down, which is going to call cause all sorts of page evictions. And if later you need the additional ACUs, then you're going to have to scale up again. So we want to avoid this constant scale up and scale down. As you can see that eventually um, the workload stayed stable and then the ACUs came down to its minimum limit, which was 1.5 ACUs. Parallel Query is also a feature that is available exclusively to Aurora MySQL 2 and Aurora MySQL 3 enhances these features in a few ways. One of the unique design approaches of Amazon Aurora is its distributed storage subsystem. We stripe Aurora database across potentially hundreds of storage nodes, and these nodes are servers with their own processing power and memory. Parallel Query takes advantage of this distributed storage subsystem and parallelizes some of the I.O. computation involved in processing data-intensive queries. When using parallel queries, data-intensive and computationally demanding work like retrieving rows from storage, extracting column values, and determining which rows match the conditions in the where clause and join clauses is deferred to the storage nodes. So in effect, parallel queries have the ability to push down the predicates to the storage subsystem and makes it unnecessary to bring all the data up to the head node for processing. This ends up speeding up the supported queries by orders of magnitude. Now, Aurora MySQL 3 supports applying parallel query optimizations to tables containing data types, text, blob, JSON, geometry, and varchar, and cars longer than 368 bytes. It also works with partition tables and aggregate functions with having clause. These are several enhancements that have been done in the parallel query feature, which was not supported in older versions before. I also want to call out a few things that are currently not supported on Aurora MySQL 3. Aurora Serverless V1 is only supported on Aurora MySQL 1 and 2, and there are no plans to bring the support to Aurora MySQL 3. Query Cache has been retired from community versions of MySQL, and as a result, it has also been removed from Aurora MySQL 3. There are a few other features that are currently not supported with Aurora MySQL 3, but we are working to add support of it in the near future. Backtrack is one of those unsupported features. Another unsupported feature is Percona Extra Backup Generated Backups. We intend to make these features available in subsequent minor release. Um, minor version releases. Okay, it's also important to be aware of a few behavioral changes that affect MySQL 8.0 and as a result also are inherited in Aurora MySQL 3. Let's take a look at those. MySQL 8.0 was a major rewrite and as a result it brings several behavioral changes along with it. I'm going to call out a few notable behavioral changes that you must account for and adopt to your code when migrating to the latest version. MySQL 8.0 introduced the new temp table storage engine, which is used for creating temporary tables by default. In addition to allocating a certain amount of memory to store internal temporary tables, temp table can spill larger data sets that don't fit in memory to either memory mapped files or to the InnoDB storage engine or it can cascade to both. This may affect the behavior of queries that use temporary tables on read replica when compared to previous versions of Aurora MySQL. Complete discussion on this top topic is beyond the scope of this session, but please take a look at the section named New Temporary Table Behavior in Aurora MySQL 3 version in our Aurora user guide to understand this new behavior. New Data Dictionary in MySQL 8 is also fully transactional unlike previous versions. Instead of using file system based metadata tables and non transactional tables, it now uses transaction schema, which makes data dictionary crash safe and also introduces uniform caching of directory objects. Auto increment behavior is also improved with the newest version of Aurora MySQL, and instead of resetting the value after a restart, now the increment value is preserved. This is because the auto increment value is preserved in the redo log itself, where the previous version of MySQL only kept it in memory and it had to be 
reset after restart. Also, several error codes have been removed. So if your code depended on certain error codes, make sure that you account for any new error code changes that might affect your code behavior. And finally, if you used ascending and descending qualifiers for group by clause in your code, please note that these are now removed and you will have to change the code to use order by instead. Again, this is not a full listing. However, this does cover some really notable changes that will affect your code. Okay, so now let's look at the options that we have at our disposal for migrating to Aurora MySQL 3. Let's look at some options that you have to upgrade to Aurora MySQL 3. If you're currently on Aurora MySQL 2 and want to upgrade to Aurora MySQL 3, I'm happy to say that now you can do it in a single step by utilizing the in-place upgrade option. The in-place support is brand new and was added just a few weeks ago. This was one of the top asks from our customers since the in-place upgrade support significantly reduces the operational burden of a major version upgrade. This option makes upgrade a simple console-based click-through operation. You modify the instance, select the Aurora MySQL 3 engine version and apply the changes either immediately or during maintenance window and that's it. We upgrade the instance behind the scenes. Again, this support was made available very recently. So if you're waiting to upgrade and wanted the in-place upgrade support, you can use it now. Another option you can use is the snapshot restore. This method, in this method, you take a snapshot of your current Aurora MySQL 2 instance and when you restore it, you choose Aurora MySQL 3 version. After restore, you have an upgraded instance. Pretty simple. Both of these options are fully managed, so you don't have to do anything other than just clicking a few buttons on the console. Now in both of these options, you will have some downtime since the instance is unavailable during the upgrade. If you want to minimize the downtime, you can use a blue-green method that involves bin log replication. Let's see how this method works. Now, you have two choices that you can use to minimize downtime during upgrade. In both methods, you create a new Aurora cluster and upgrade it to the latest version, and then use binary log replication to sync changes between old primary and the upgraded cluster. Finally, you do the cutover and applications divert traffic to the upgraded cluster. The main way in which these two methods differ is how the new cluster is created. You can either use a snapshot restore method where you make the snapshot of primary and while restoring, you choose Aurora MySQL 3 version. The second method is to create the new cluster by using fast cloning. You can use cloning to create the new cluster, then do an in-place upgrade, then use bin log replication to sync the ongoing changes. The primary advantage of using cloning over snapshot is time savings. Aurora clone is generally much faster and only takes a few minutes to create, while snapshot restore may take much longer and will depend on the, the restore time will depend on the size of the cluster. Either method will give you the same benefit of reduced downtime during upgrade. So it's really up to you which method you like to use. Now I'm gonna hand over to Umesh and he is going to show you a quick demo on using the snapshot restore method and using the blue green upgrade method to reduce downtime. Over to you, Umesh. Hello everyone. My name is Umesh Resta and I'm an AWS solution architect. Today in this demo, I'll show you how you can upgrade your Aurora MySQL version two, which is compatible with MySQL 5.7 to Aurora MySQL version 3, which is compatible with MySQL 8.0. Now I have my uh, Aurora MySQL 2.10.2 cluster here, which is compatible with 5.7. And when you go to the configuration tab, you can see that I have specified a custom parameter group. And on the custom parameter group, I have already enabled the bin log where the value is set to mixed. Now we are using a snapshot and restore process. So to create the snapshot, select your writer instance, go to actions and click on text snapshot. 
Now give a name to your snapshot and then click on text snapshot. Now that my snapshot is ready, let's go ahead and restore it. So select your snapshot, go to actions, and then click on restore snapshot. Now on this page, you will select your most recent Aura MySQL version. And I'm selecting Aura MySQL 3.02.0, which is compatible with MySQL 8.0.23. Give your DB cluster name. And you can do necessary modifications, but I will leave everything as default. I'll change the class to dbt3 medium and click on restore db cluster. Now my newly restored cluster is available. Uh, please click on the writer instance, go to the logs and events, and you will see that there's a bin log position from crash recovery with the uh, bin log file and the position. Please make a note of this as you will need this later. Now let's go to the AWS Cloud9 ID. I have this screen divided into two halves. The first left window is connected to my Aurora MySQL 2.0 version that's currently running MySQL 5.7. And my right window is connected to the restored Aurora MySQL 3 version, which is compatible with MySQL 8.0. Now you can see that there is a table called cars in my primary cluster. And since I use the snapshot and restore, I have the same table cars in my replicated cluster. Now let's go ahead and add a different table in my primary cluster. Now I added a new table called persons in my primary cluster and let's check, let's see if we have that replicated on these secondary cluster and it is not so there are a couple of steps we have to do to get this replicated to my secondary cluster so on the secondary cluster i'm going to create a replication user uh, which is rep repl underscore user identified by the password. And now that the replication user is created, let's go ahead and grant the permission for this user to access those bin logs file from the source database. Now let's go ahead and call this store procedure where you'll provide your source endpoints, the port number, username, password, and then the bin log file and the position number. Let's run this command. And again, let's call the store procedure where you'll start the replication. And you can see the message as replica is currently running normally. Now we can see that the replica has caught up with the master as you can see, the seconds behind master is zero second. So let's go ahead and check if we have that uh, person's table on this replica. And you can see that we have the new table called persons. Now let's go ahead and create a new table called books in the source. And we can see that there is a new table called books. Now let's check on the replica if that is replicated. And you can see that there is a new table called books. So this concludes the demo on how we can do binary replication from the source cluster to the replication cluster. Thank you. Thank you, Umesh. That was a great demo. Now let's look at some of the methods that you can use to upgrade from Aurora MySQL 1. If you have the older version of Aurora MySQL, 
which is our MySQL 1, you will have to use a two-step upgrade to get to Aurora MySQL 3. First, you will have to upgrade to Aurora MySQL 2 using any of the methods discussed earlier, and then you can upgrade to Aurora MySQL 3. Both upgrades follow the same process. You have to do it twice since you cannot skip a major version during upgrade. And what if you wanted to migrate from RDS MySQL instance? Um, here's how you can achieve that. The easiest and the recommended way to migrate from RDS MySQL to Aurora MySQL is to create an Aurora read replica from RDS MySQL primary instance. You can spin up an Aurora read replica off of your RDS MySQL primary instance with just a few clicks on the AWS RDS console. This would restore the snapshot of your RDS instance and then automatically rep start replication between RDS and Aurora. So you have all of your data moved into the Aurora cluster when the replication is completed. When the replica lag between the RDS MySQL instance and the RDS and the Aurora MySQL read replica is zero, you can stop replication. And at this point, you can make Aurora read replica, the standalone Aurora cluster for reading and writing, and the, the migration at this point is completed. This method therefore provides a near zero downtime migration if you are migrating to Aurora in the same AWS account and region as your primary RDS instance. If you prefer, you can also use the snapshot restore method where you can take a snapshot of the primary RDS MySQL database instance and while restoring, you can choose to restore it as Aurora MySQL cluster. You can use this method to migrate to Aurora MySQL if you're migrating to a different account or different region. You can also set up binary log replication to reduce downtime. Now this binary log replication in this case is going to be manual and self-managed. One thing to note here is that Aurora MySQL 3 currently only supports MySQL 8.0.23 compatibility, so you can only migrate from RDS MySQL instances that are at or below 8.0.23 minor versions. Finally, let's take a look at what methods you can use to migrate from self-managed MySQL instances, as in the MySQL instances that are running on-premises or on EC2 instances that you installed yourself and you're managing yourself. To migrate from a self-managed MySQL compatible database to Aurora MySQL 3, there are two main recommended approaches. One is to perform a logical dump and restore by using native MySQL tools such as MySQL dump. You can also use community developed tools like MyDumper or MyLoader, which is more suitable for larger data sets since it uses parallel threads for backup and restore. You can use binary log replication between the source and target to minimize the overall downtime. Another way to migrate from self-managed MySQL to Aurora is to use AWS Database Migration Service or DMS, which can perform both full load and change data capture between source and target. A major engine version upgrade can introduce changes that aren't backward compatible with existing applications. Therefore, you have to remember that it's critical to test these changes thoroughly to ensure least impact on your applications. You can use the MySQL check upgrade um, option to analyze existing Aurora MySQL databases and identify any potential upgrade issues in advance. Make sure you address all flagged items before upgrading. We also recommend to check MySQL 8.0 documentation to understand the new improvements and enhancements done with this major version, and also review any changes that have been made to default values for any parameters you may be using today. If you're upgrading from existing Aurora MySQL 1 or Aurora MySQL 2 clusters and using any sort of custom parameters in your parameter groups, make sure to create a copy of that parameter group which is compatible with Aurora MySQL 3 version as well as parameter groups uh, because the parameter groups are engine and version specific. Finally, test your application before upgrading any production workload to Aurora MySQL 3 to avoid any unforeseen issues later. So I wanted to call out a few considerations before you move to Aurora MySQL 3. Consider Aurora MySQL 3 
if you prioritize future-proofing your workloads and access to latest features. The Aurora MySQL team will focus on developing and releasing new capabilities on the newest 3 platform, or Aurora MySQL 3 platform. You will get access to the latest hardware in the form of AuroraDB cluster instances on Aurora MySQL 3. For example, the latest update 3.02.1 brings support for the latest R6i instance types. If you're creating a new workload and don't have any legacy code dependency, you should be using the latest version of Aurora MySQL, which is Aurora MySQL 3. Now, a long-term support or LTS version of Aurora MySQL 3 is coming, but in the meantime, you should consider Aurora MySQL 3, uh, Aurora MySQL 2, if you need the LTS or long-time support version of Database Engine, where you can be assured that software updates are limited to security and bug fixes. So to summarize, Aurora MySQL 3 brings close compatibility and minor version currency with MySQL 8.0. Several enhancements makes it feature rich and easy target to migrate from commercial database engines. Brand new features and innovations like serverless v2 and R6i instances types will be available on Aurora MySQL 3 going forward. An in-place version upgrade is now available which helps reduce operational burden of upgrading, which is a brand new features that customers have been asking for for a while. Thank you so much for spending this time with us today. As we discussed all the rich features set and enhancements introduced in Aurora MySQL 3. I hope this was useful to you. Thank you for attending the session and have a great rest of your day.